Here is an inmate that I have called Paraphalonopsis labucensis. This orchid is a warm to hot grower. It loves high humidity. The whole orchid would already have triple the size of what it's got in my collection because of my climate. And yes, it is not allowed to live outdoors in freedom. I have to contain it in a pot if I stand any chance of growing it. And it's an OG in my collection. 2018 is when I bought it. Now, granted, Paraphalonopsis in their ideal habitat are slow growers anyway, but if you compound that slow growing habit and give it a climate where it's not very happy, it's going to slow down even more and actually stop growing during the cooler months of the year, as in my case, it will grind to a halt <laughs> in December. This orchid, even though you wouldn't think it because it's been in this pot for four years, you wouldn't think that it is precious to me. <laughs> Well, it takes a while for an orchid to acclimate. So let's just make that one year. Then it takes a while to know, is the orchid actually healthy based on the order that it came in? That makes a second year. Then you can see that another needle is dying off while another one is growing. You want to leave an orchid alone. You don't want to keep stressing it if you're not sure about the setup. Try to keep the roots hydrated as best as possible that are alive. So these factors, year three, here we are in year four, now I'm ready to actually handle my labucensis because I've got active root growth and I'm going to do something about it. And well, huh, you can see that there was a lot of death in the previous pot and those are the old roots that clearly didn't make it. This orchid really, really wanting to have the roots in the air surrounded by 90% humidity and a heat index of 35 and up all year round. Well, Lekka and evaporative cooling is going to cool those roots down during the winter. Now, shocker, I am going back to Lekka and self-watering with this orchid. But first of all, I'm going to try and get those roots a little bit more pliable because the velamen is extremely dry and I do want to attempt to get them a little bit more pliable, a little bit more bendy bendy and hopefully get them back into a pot. My idea being, ideally, because space is an issue, is to put her in the same pot as previously. But, uh, yeah, after an hour of soaking her, the velamen of the roots that were out exposed in the air, they still have freckles on them. The spongy interior is not expanding. The roots are not happy. And that means I'm going to have a real issue getting them into the same size pot. But I've already made another contraption here and I will talk you through that. I didn't do that on camera because who wants to watch somebody fiddle with a wire, microfiber and all that stuff. So anyway, my inmate, poor thing, I should have known better, but the flowers on this are so beautiful, very fragrant. And I'm hoping that maybe in three or four years we'll get her to that point. If I do not lose the roots that are going to go into a pot when we give her a brand new clean cell. <laughs> and we're going to tie her down. Oh, it's a shame. A real, real shame. Anyway, let's get moving. Oh, by the way, this is calcium and magnesium. And because she is weak, I've got 200 parts per million of calcium and magnesium in there and 100 parts per million of seaweed. And despite it being so late in the season, if she's going to be growing for me a little bit more, I'm going to pump all the strength into her. Plus, I have added more seaweed just to kickstart a little bit more of the hormone activity before she goes to sleep. This is not a dormant orchid, okay? I just want to make that clear in case anybody is here looking for care guides. This orchid doesn't go dormant. It's just that my climate will make it go to sleep, so to speak, because it's just like I am not putting anything out into that cold environment. And I don't blame it. We're kind of spirit animals in that way. <laughs> but anyway, you see, this is her previous pot. It's a 15 centimeter pot and I don't want to be messing around with the roots trying to bend them in there when huh, I could possibly crack them. So she is going to go into this, which is an 18 centimeter pot, just because I want to accommodate the roots. Before we do that though, I'm going to put her back in to the water. The more the merrier, the longer the better. 
and I'm going to fandangle my support in such a way that she will be able to stay in the pot and not get jiggled around. I do not want any abrasion on these root tips because that's going to make her stop. With a velamen being that unhappy, those roots need to be interfered with as little as possible. So I've got my microfiber and I put a little wire through the holes at the base, secured it at the bottom here because I think I'm going to want that wire around the base of the orchid as such, just to make sure that she doesn't move around when it comes time to flushing. And I'm gonna have her in the middle, so I'm going to accommodate that. And then the idea being that the green wire just wraps around the middle support until it reaches the top. I cannot tell you how happy I was to see that one root is actually like a self-watering root. That made me super, super happy. That's important because if anything else fails from here on in, if I lose roots, then I'm going to be at least safe in the knowledge that I have one root that's going to do the job. Okay, something like that. The proof will be in the pudding when I put the orchid in, which we are going to do right now. First things first. See that? And it has a root tip. Muy importante. That one root could be the lifesaver. Her get out of jail free card. And because I have one root tip already at the base of the pot. Ah. I really do want these in there, even though I'm risking them. Having them outside is not going to be of any help to the orchid whatsoever. She's also going to be living inside, going to be shuffled around during the winter. These roots started to grow this season. They've never been this long. The extensions are back here. Uh, cracking them is going to be, well, the last thing that I want. And now, the point is not to get her upright. That's not why I'm doing this. It's just to secure her. And I'm doing this before I put the lacquer in to avoid any unnecessary jostling of the root tips when the lacquer goes in. There's a crack right here. That was from last year. I got away with that one. Before anything else happens now, I'm going to raise one microfiber up and create a loop. Because I will be feeding Lekka underneath it. And I can reuse the water that she was soaking in to fill up that pot. Because as you saw, there was not much debris around the Lekka, which all I did was rinse off. And this time around, what I'm doing is only large lecker, whereas the previous lecker ratio was mixed in large, medium, small. From the old pot, I took out all the large lecker, which is clean. I didn't boil it because there's no need to sterilize this. It's gone from one pot and is going back into the same orchid. Just rinsed it out, washed it clear of any debris. The idea now being to feed Lekka under that loop to maximize the wicking efficacy throughout the pot. The water is there to protect any kind of velamen that is damaged or a root tip that is trying to really make its best effort into growing from being bashed by solid hard rock hard Lekka just hitting on it. I try to avoid that as best as possible. The reason some of my leka in this pot is floating is because the other pot was also left a little bit drier knowing that this orchid may not have active roots in the pot. Four years and I don't know what was happening in the pot. So I was really pleased to see this one right here when I unpotted her. And that is why the leka is floating because it was a little bit drier on the surface because I didn't want to mist around the base too much, but I needed to somehow keep the Valamen alive in this setup prior, and it was all a little bit of a hit and miss. So my Lekka that is floating was all surface Lekka. And now I'm going to fill up with fresh Lekka. 
Before I do that though, I want to make sure that this root tip, oh, <laughs> you have to stay down. Do not even think about pointing upwards. Okay, let's go to the other side. No pointing upwards. Really? If that thing grows out over the edge next year, then at least we know we've got something active and has the capacity of surviving in Lekka and self-watering. I don't like the direction it's going, but I'm not going to force the issue. Be happy with what you got. And if something goes wrong between now and me filling her up, this orchid is going to get unpotted and I'm going to start again. Okay, now normally I drain this pot, but I'm going to let her soak in calcium and magnesium overnight. She needs it. Honestly, she needs it. All the sporadic misting I have done have not done her justice. It's not good enough. Also, I have placed large lecker around this root that was only exposed to air where the velamen is super shriveled. It looks like a grilled sausage. There's a root tip coming out here. I don't know if this one is actually going to continue. It's trying. And I'm going to place a microfiber over the top of this one right here. Dipped in the nice saucy CalMag solution that I used previously. So I can in future put small leka all along the top here because this velamen is used to a much more water retentive environment. It was in the pot, so to speak before it started to grow up and out and over. So if I need to, I will add small lecker and fill that up. For now, I want to watch what happens with the roots that I can see and we can adapt in the future if necessary and if not, even better than, you know, we've done our job. But yeah, normally I would drain it. But in this case, I'm quite happy to leave her overnight in the pot. I still have balmy night temperatures. It's not like the leka is going to get cold. Just to answer a question then that you may have from what I said in the beginning. Warm to hot grower and leka has evaporative cooling. Why are you doing this? I was ready to put her into lava rock to avoid the evaporative cooling. But when I saw that one root that grew really nicely and has an active root tip that was successful and surviving in the leka, I changed my mind and thought, nope, we can skip the lava rock. We're going back to leka because it shows me that hopefully the other roots will survive. I doubt it but we've got to give it a go. But I then reduced the moisture even further by going with just large lecker. So I hope that makes sense. If I hadn't seen that active root in the pot with a root tip, we would have been doing this with large lava rock. Inmate Labukensis hopefully is going to do much better for us. Gosh, like I said, correctional facility here. I find that orchids and pots, yeah. I'm being selfish because I want to grow it. <laughs> they should be out in the wild living their best life. So hopefully I can get it right for this one. A good feast of cow mag and seaweed. Yums! Not a masterclass, but I hope that you saw some tips in this video that maybe could help you with an orchid in your collection. If you have any questions, comments are there for a reason. Happy to hear from you, even if it's just to say hi. Thank you so much for watching. Have yourself a beautiful day. On one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.